bus coming in, and you can see where the V is plugged down. You got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight bits. So th in theory, if you sit on this, you, this is where you know you'll see the actual opcode being fetched, and you'll see the, some of the data bytes too. You won't see all of them though because of the way the von Neumann architecture was um, was was designed into this. And so, if you if you think about it, you can use two needles to dump this chip. Anybody have any ideas how? Anybody? You can use one on the latch gate clock, and you can use one that walks the data bus. So you put one needle down on the latch, and when when the timing's right, that you see an instruction that says like um, f fetch your opcode, and then the next clock cycle it says fetch your next opcode. It's perfect. So in two clock cycles, you get two opcodes fetched. Now that's not really the case on the old 6805s because I, they had a, a divide by two, and I don't think any instructions ran in one or one or even two clock cycles. But you could definitely get an instruction that ran in say three clock cycles. So then you get this pattern when you spill the beans that basically is um, opcode opcode space opcode opcode space in in, in a, basically a linear rip, a sequential readout. Um, and this technique still works today what I'm talking about. I mean there's really no way for these guys to prevent someone like myself from breaking into their chip and hijacking the entire virtually mapped code space, let's say 64 bits like a standard architecture um, and, and making it just spill itself to me. Questions? Okay. So we have 58 minutes. Keep me in check or I'll never get done. So go a little little later in time now, GSM says, well, we want you to make some changes. Motorola says, well, we actually made some changes for NDS for the Sky Period 9 card. Now, I did not sh I'm not showing you a picture of the Sky Period 9 card, but, but just assume it came out, it got hacked, and it had an opcode swapping going on. So it was a little more tricky than just sit on the data bus and understand it. You sat on the data bus and you saw, you saw, for example, like a 49 instead of an opcode of a 29. Things like this. I forget the pattern, but so you had basically a swapping of bits and, and then an XOR on bit 7. So, so uh, I'm sorry, an inverse, um, you know, of, uh, of bit 7. And so, uh, if we look at this picture, they did the same thing. Uh, they did the same thing here, but no XOR on bit seven. So here's the data bus again. If we were to assume, am I going too fast? Everybody following? Okay. Um, and there's a very there's value to what I'm explaining now that you'll find out soon, very soon, because um, this is really classic and it's awesome. It's old, but it's cool. It's very cool. And this is something that you guys, if you're trying to learn, can play with at home or, or in a makeshift lab or in college or something. You know, <laughs> I play with it at home. <laughs> so, um, so basically, let's assume that the bus runs seven down to, or zero. Either way, zero to seven, seven to zero. Let's for 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 ha -ha's, This is zero. This is seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. This line is actually the clock line, which I don't know why it's there, but it is. So look where the via is. One second. So the bus is running, you know, like I was saying, seven down to zero. Now let's assume that these latches run seven to zero also. So what just happened here? If this is the case, then this via should have been up here on seven here. It's not. Look what they did. They plugged it down onto bit two. So that means that in order to understand the instruction set on this chip, you're going to get opcodes that you have to demangle, and then you're going to get operands, the second fetch, let's say, second or third fetch of an instruction that are going to be in the clear. Because the ALU doesn't do this, only the opcode does this. This is a very beautiful way of keeping honest people honest back in the day. If they didn't, if they just tried to sit on the bus, you know, at the exit point of ROM, let's say, they're not, in, in given it's a von Neumann architecture, this guy would be smart enough to know that he's going to see RAM and he's going to see ROM and EEPROM all on one data bus. Uh, they didn't split these up in the old days. Everything fit in 64K. But what he would have seen was basically that. Uh, every time it's bit, you know, it, it, the opcode is really bit seven, he's going to see that it was, it was bit two that came on. And so, and here, and bit seven was really plugged into bit six. Bit five was really plugged into bit zero. And, and, and it just, you, you can kind of see the pattern here and so forth. Um, I was very surprised when I saw this because this is off the shelf GSM SIM chip from 1996, 1995. These are very large chips also. These are at least one micron. I, I don't, I've never measured them, but if, if I was to measure them based on the, tr on the top metal track, I'd say that they're, they're even maybe 1.2 microns or bigger. So 
Another company out there making smart cards for DirecTV. Who here has DirecTV? Anybody? Okay. So I used to work for them, well, NDS, but, and so we made this custom chip here. Well, this one wasn't custom, but it, it had an ASIC with it. So Sky 10, anybody know Sky 10 in the UK? So Sky 10 gets this chip with an ASIC. America's gets this chip with an ASIC. South America gets this chip with an ASIC. This chip's being used all over the world. They tell, basically they tell Siemens, we want you to swap the instruction table. Because this chip ran on, on a microcode and uh, it, it was more like a risk infrastructure and it, and it, and it simulated the 8051. So you basically, you had a, you had a, a ROM here that was not visible without staining. So in order to see the, the bits, the ones and the zeros here, if you could, you'd have to stain it with the dash etchant. And then you'd see, you'd see dots everywhere there was a p-type doping. And so you could do it that way. You could stain it. And then if you figure out the ordering of the, uh, of the addressing scheme, you'd have the entire ROM read out. But you still need to get the EEPROM out. And so NDS knew that you might sit on the data bus and, and, and eavesdrop. And so what they did was they told Infineon, it was Siemens at back, in the back then, we want you to take the, the take the instructions which are mapped through this table right here and we want you to switch them around. This is a table basically of, of uh, 256 by 9 bits. So basically it can go from 0 to 512 in, in theory, like a, two, like, a, like a high and a low address and it supports 256 uh, opcodes because there's 256 opcodes in the 8051. So this table's readable and this table's readable optically. They, could, they, they knew you wouldn't understand it because in order to understand where this points into here, you would have to understand, you know, all of the logic over here. And obviously the easiest way for a hacker to get them would have been to read the ROM optically. But again, why not just sit on the instruction latches, freeze them and make it spill its guts. You'll have everything out in 10 minutes. So does anybody do probing, microprobing? Cool. Do you play around with uh, like freezing instructions and things like this? No? Okay. You can have a lot of fun with it. And these chips are great to learn on and you know any, any CPU really you can play this tr these tricks on. So you had that, the ROM up here and then you had the static RAM over here, 256 bytes, very basic. You had the program counter over here to drive, the, to drive it, the high and the low. And you can almost literally see it too. I don't even think they scrambled it. The low order bus, uh, it's, I, I don't remember which one it was, but it's either the high side or the low side of this, of this, uh, this area. Your picture looks better than my picture. Um, <laughs> so you, here's, your, here's your program counter basically to assign everything. Um, and so here you've got instruction latches. Um, it's not a very close up picture but this is, this is 0.8 microns. So this is 800 nanometers. The gentleman back there, I think I heard him say 45 nanometers. I believe that's what she said. This is 800. So this is night and day difference. We're slowly shrinking in this presentation, just FYI. So we'll be at 90 in about 50 minutes. <laughs> so the opcodes basically were presented, read from the bus, came in on these eight latches and presented, they're latched here to be put, presented to this table. Now at DEF CON I showed you this table in 2008. Uh, um, I showed it to you where you could see this, the, um, on, at the poly you can see the way, the, the actual ones and zeros of this, of this ROM. Uh, but you've got to strip off this top metal first. And so here's your instruction latches. If you want to dump the chip you can just freeze it right here and sit on it. And it's ordered 0 to 7. Even the bus was in order from 0 to 7. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. What latches here is held and, fr and driven on this, these lines here up into the row and column uh, drivers. To, to, and then the next clock cycle, the value is, well, actually it's, 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 it's combinatorial logic, so it's driven immediately. Um, anyway, so that's this one. So even, even Infineon got a little smarter. But I think it was NDS's doing that did this, but I never really got, got the 411 on, on who did, who, who told who what to do here. But so Siemens gets smarter and they said, okay, now what we're going to do for the Sky 11 chip, anybody here use Sky 11? Okay, never, I'm going to stop asking then. So satellite hackers, <laughs> Sky 11 chip comes out. This time what they did, same type of architecture, I think it's a 0.7. So they shrink from 0.8 to 0.7 micron. So they go from 800 to 700 nanometers. The bus is still in order. So 76543210. Now what's interesting about this architecture is that the low address of the, of the fetch, 
or the you know the low address of the program counter is on the bus. So you get the low address of the of the uh, program counter, and then on the next clock cycle, you see the value that's being fetched from that memory address or written to for that much if it's RAM. Um, so you have the bits coming in seven, six, five, you know, and all these in order. But look, there's some logic added in front of the latches. So if you recall, there's logic. There's x. This is a, this whole block right here. This is extra, and what this actually is 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 three latch, three extra latches to latch seven, six, and five of the data bus, and then they took and they had an they had three XORs. So what they they latched the value of, of the of the the low addresses bit three bits of the low address got latched, and then they got exclusive ORD against three bits of the opcode. It's very clever. It's very cool, but it's very obvious also, and so. <clears throat> this chip also got hacked. Now, at this time, though, NDS knew they started putting ASICs into the silicon, so they were having heavy-duty, you know, opcode changes. Um, data, the data bus was being scrambled, and they had an ASIC on board at this point. Now, this is still Siemens. They'd become Infineon like a year later or so. In Europe, there's a company called Canal Plus. Anybody know Canal Plus Technologies? So Canal Plus Technologies used to uh, only be television producing. And then at some point in time, they, they started coming out with their own conditional access system called Seca. So Seca Generation 2 used, they, they had this belief that they could use several different smart card chips. And, and, and through this, several different launches of smart card chips, they'd somehow be secure. But you're only as strong as your weakest link. And so they, they introduced for Seca 2 this, this Okidata uh, 8051 type architecture. And it's kind of funny because they, Oki added a bunch of fake tracks to the chip. And, they, and ST is famous for doing this too. They add a complete block of logic that's fake that has nothing to do with anything. And so you can see here, here's, here's a line. This line does nothing. This line's just sitting here floating. And um, I guess they think they're protecting you from optically reading the ROM out again. But who's going to optically read out the ROM? That's, a, that's something that I would do today more than I would have done in the past. Just because it's easier for me to image the ROMs today than, than it is to probe the bus because they've gotten so small. So you can see here this is all fake and the chip wasn't handled very good so it got scratched here. Um, so this, this I, I, ne I don't understand why they did it but this is a technique that they started to come out with. So here this is the entire chip and as you can see in the image, it looked pretty cool. I don't know otherwise what it did though. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I mean, you know. Now today, before, well actually, let me, let me slow down here. So here's the core of this chip. It's so obvious in the older technologies where the core was. Because the core ran on what they call, what I call, I always call it microcode, even if it really, it was a PLA. Does anybody design CPUs? So you, you know exactly where I'm coming from. This table has to know what opcode you're executing. That means the instruction latches are near. So you see a ROM, a, a ROM in the core, there's something important there. And so it's first, this, is, this, this will stick out like a sore thumb to anybody. Um, and well, anybody that's got, you know, um, that, that understands what they're looking at or tries to. And so um, I actually don't know where the instruction registers are, but they're over here. So I mean I never, I never actually probed them, that's why. So, and so what you'd see on the instruction register, I talked about it earlier, you'd see, you'd see the live data bus on the left side and on the right side you'd see the frozen instruction of the opcode it's executing. If, the, if, it, if, it re, if it releases that drive and becomes transparent, that opcode's not, not going to execute if it's in the middle of executing something. Just a bit, well, and this depends on the design too, the architecture.